What's up guys, I am back from Disney and we are back because you know the market doesn't stop. Three up, three down, starts right now. Hey, what's going on guys? We were out last week. Our course was on family vacation at Disney World. Jack, I think was organizing his comics or doing yeah, what he does. Doing something. But we, did, but we did stay in touch and we got a great show for you. This is the three up, three down. We're talking about three hot and three cold market trends in the comic book community. We're getting into it right now, starting with the three up portion. And unless you lived under a rock and you didn't miss all those Super Bowl commercials or didn't look online at all, we saw new Disney Plus footage. And we know right now, WandaVision is hot. Yeah, Brian. And this is another reason why I'm real bullish on these Disney Plus shows because, you know, this was of all the shows that was announced, one of the least talked about when we had the original announcement with this whole new slate of, you know, major MCU televised programming through the Disney Plus streaming app. Um, but as time has gone on, and what a platform, Super Bowl Sunday, to release this ad. Uh, it has the speculators going crazy because there's been so much guesswork on this series like they're freeze framing the freaking trailers and pulling yes. out stuff Same right thing, i think this ties to this storyline and it's amazing because there's so much guesswork that is being done right now um on a lot of different properties in the mcu where that's what's going on right you're you're, you're trying to piece together so we saw certain things in, in this ad we saw the gray vision right so that west coast avengers 45 that scene spikes um we see what looks like twins so then of course that vision scarlet witch miniseries number 12 that book is seeing spikes and that's the first appearance of the children um we're also seeing that tom king vision run which i think a lot of this series is going to be kind of based upon seeing great secondary market uh spikes that is a classic reader buzz series if you've never read that series be sure to pick that up and trade it is really what started um Tom King, kind of his ascension, uh, his work with Vision and Mr. Miracle uh, really kind of ascended him to the place where he could even then go become the writer of Batman. But, you know, I, I think that we're going to see this as a trend, Brian, going forward with these Disney Plus shows. I think there's going to be a lot of talk on the secondary market about these shows, but I don't think we've seen the last of it when, as it relates to this show, because there's still so much we don't know and so much we're just guessing. And the next one we're talking about in the three-up portion this week is Justice League Dark. Now you might be going, why are we talking about Justice League Dark? There's a pretty big movie guy out there in J.J. Abrams and Bad Robot tied to this now, isn't there, Jack? Yeah, that's right, Brian. And the funny thing about it is it is for both television and movies. Now, we don't know which one they're going to be doing or a combination of the two. But either way, we now have somebody in kind of control of the Justice League Dark universe. And that gives me kind of higher hopes for Justice League Dark than some of the other DC Extended Universe properties. And we know that, like we've said, Justice League Dark has just immense potential. Uh, horror being popular, the team element has kind of worked through movies before. Uh, it also allows you to branch off and spin off. Uh, Constantine has been good. Not necessarily the TV show didn't work, the movie didn't work. But people like Matt Ryan as Constantine. Um, Swamp Thing was well received critically, although it had its own budgetary issues and it only lasted one season. So I think if we can do this right, um, it can be big. But J.J. Abrams it is a, certainly a great candidate to do it. And it's funny because when we started this show, Justice League Dark was one of the first kind of properties to be on the cold list. And we talked about how we were in Baltimore and I saw so many Justice League Dark keys, whether it was uh, Swamp Thing 49 or 50 or that annual number two or uh, – Justice League Dark number one from the New 52 series, first print, second print. Justice League uh, Dark number nine, the first of the team with Constantine in it. Um, we saw these books for $5 in $5 bins regularly. We were seeing uh, some of the New 52 stuff in dollar bins. It was really surprising. And it was kind of something Brian and I commented on as fans of the property. So to now see all of those books be hot right now and, and have doubled and tripled and quadrupled in value um, it's kind of cool to see it come full circle. Hopefully they can put something together because I know that there's a lot of people out there that would love to see Justice League Dark in some sort of media. Yeah, I do miss that. I wanted to see the old Guillermo del, Guillermo del Toro 
when he was tied to it, but there's no better person than J.J. Abrams. And you mentioned that new 52 number one. That's one issue that I like, especially because if it's being abused, it's got that black cover on it that makes it kind of hard to find in high grade. Absolutely. Uh, and, I'll, you know, a lot of those uh, new 52 Justice League darks, that wasn't like an immediately popular series. So some of those books did sit on the shelves for several months. So you see a lot of VF to near mint copies available on the market. Yeah, real easy to get spine ticks on those. And then the last one we have for the three-up portion this week is Omnipotentus. That's right, coming out of Moon Girl number 28. This is hot. Not for me. I have no desire for anything Moon Girl or this Omnipotentus whatever. But no denying, it is hot right now, and people are buying this up. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, people have long been uh, in favor of this character from a spec perspective. But it's really funny, Brian. This is an example of FOMO and the internet community doing it to itself to its fullest. Um, the only place, and, and the community's got to let us know, right? Um, we were off last week, so we may have missed some of the moving and shakings that have gone on. But the only thing that we've seen was we know that uh, our friend Jim's Comics from over at the Jim's Comics YouTube channel and on Instagram, um, he mentioned this book as a possibility to tie into Donny Kate's Thor series. And it seems like that's all I've seen. And if that's directly the, the cause for the spike, that's shocking because the, the book was trading already. It was already kind of a popular book, right? It, it had gotten kind of down to about the $25 level. It was slowly starting to creep up to about $40. And then in the course of less than a week has spiked with the most recent sale being $120. The crazy thing about the $120 sale is the previous sale before that was like 70. So it just seems like with so few listed and only like 6,000 printed, um, you're seeing each sale break the previous high of, of the previous sale. And I, I'm so curious how crazy this could get because, you know, the, the new flipper regime that's the, you know, that's internet based, that's social media based, that's app based. Um, has the ability to move prices both high as is with the three up portion and low, like the three down portion faster than anything I've ever seen. Yeah. So kudos to those people who are buying it up or selling them or making the profit. I'm sitting this one out because everyone that knows me knows I don't care for devil dinosaur. I don't care for that whole series. Even this ties into other series or whatsoever. So you guys that have got your chips in the game, Good luck. So there's the up portion, and we're going to get right into the three down right now, starting with Bloodshot. Bloodshot's currently down. Have a feeling this might change in a couple of months because we have that movie that's going to be coming out soon. Yeah, Brian, this is really a result of what we always talk about, the price cycle that goes on, largely with kind of uh, theatrical releases. Um, usually we talk about it with indie comics. Um, Valiant kind of like rides that like weird – middle ground of is it indie um is it more of us as you call them small press because you know it's a superhero franchise at the end of the day but we saw giant spikes another thing to harken back to baltimore when you and i were in baltimore the day that sunday that that trailer hit um i've never seen so much discussion about a valiant property on a convention floor the entire convention floor was talking about valiant they were talking about um you know uh, Rye, they were talking about Eternal Warrior 5, they were talking about uh, Rye Zero, they were chasing those books, dealers were hiking prices up and they were still selling. There was no telling how high these prices were going to get. It was, it's natural that prices have fallen, to be honest with you. Um, the other thing is, I think Sony has kind of pushed back on the marketing. If this was Marvel, I feel like we'd be seeing ads for this movie. It's two months away. Um, I think it's March 19th. So at this point, we're, or it's a month away. We're sitting in the middle of February, uh, um, or first week in February. We should be seeing a major TV marketing spots push. And yeah, and we're not seeing that. Um, is it because Sony doesn't necessarily have that same faith in Bloodshot? Could be. Um, but honestly, it could just be the way in which they go about promoting their movies versus the way we're used to seeing Marvel promote their movies. And it's partially why Marvel is, is successful. Um, so, you know, time's going to tell. And, but the point is, if you had missed out on Bloodshot, right, 
and the prices spiked and then you saw the first trailer and you saw the second trailer and you're like, I think this movie is going to be good and it's going to catch people off guard. Um, and because a trailer isn't enough, usually you can kind of jump off of the trailer with something like Bloodshot where there's so much almost um, distaste for Valiant in the secondary market. Like people have this prove it to me met, uh, method and, and kind of mentality when it comes to Valiant. Um, it's, this thing was always going to come down to how well the movie actually fares itself. You're looking at prices now where you were, you, if you were looking at Rise Zero, you were looking $40 to $60. You're looking now down into that $15 to $20 range, um, which is back to where it was before the movie hype even existed when they were still filming a year ago. Um, Eternal Warrior, I'm seeing down to $30, down from the $60 to $75 that it was selling for at the height of the original teaser trailer release. So a lot of buying opportunities if you think this movie is going to deliver based on what we saw in the trailer. If it does, um, there's certainly some, some profit to be made, or if, if you're just a collector. Um, if this movie is successful, we may never see prices this cheap again on these books. So now may be the time to grab them. Um, but it, it's all going to come down to that March 19th movie release. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the movie. I think the movie is probably going to make me more of a fan. We've had this discussion a bunch of times where I'm just not big on Bloodshot, but that's not because that's because I don't really read Bloodshot. But I think like me and others, once that movie comes out, it's going to get people hyped up. And Kind of like my kids at Disney World went to that Star Wars land. They were all excited. And I was like, I've been telling you to watch the movies. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, when I get back, we'll watch the movies. But either way, Bloodshot, great buying opportunity. And the next one on the three down portion is Walking Dead. Who would have thought we'd be talking about Walking Dead being cold, say, what, five years ago? Right, Brian. And when you first saw this list, you, you kind of laughed at Walking Dead being on the list. Like, of course, Walking Dead's cold. Because the reality is it's been colder than it, what we're used to for a number, almost a number of years at this point. Um, but what I mentioned to you and, and what I will kind of reiterate to the community and what I've noticed is, you know, through selling at conventions or selling online, even in the last six months, as this season of Walking Dead has progressed, I've seen a downturn in Walking Dead. Um, in the middle to late part of last year, uh, there was still demand for Negan's first appearance that has fallen all the way off. Um, the Whisperers storyline had a lot of, uh, you know, with uh, Alpha had a lot of potential and a lot of people paying attention to it and then it kind of fell flat so you know i i think that walking dead at this point is done as far as a tv series as it relates to comic book secondary market sales um i don't see the market getting overly excited about anything that's going to happen on that show having said that we also know the vastness of the deal that robert kirkman and skybound have with <coughs> sorry you're good the vastness of the deal that Skybound and Robert Kirkman have with AMC and the fact that there's going to be so many different, um, whether it's movies or spinoff. Yeah, you got those Rick Grimes movies. movies coming or something. Also. Right. We could see prequels. Um, we could see there's, it's it, any number of things. So the funny thing about this comic is it, it's hard to really sit here and say, yeah, I advocate buying Walking Dead key issues. But I will say that at these prices, I never thought some, they would get so low on some of these major keys. Um, if you ever wanted them as a collector, now's the time to go ahead and acquire, right? Now is the time to grab that Abraham and, um, and you know, those, the governor and those characters who are not going to see anymore, um, who the prices have kind of dropped all the way down. On. First appearance of Daryl. You know, <laughs> If they did, if they had done that in the comics, that would have been the biggest thing. But, um, you know, but that's that's one of those things where, uh, uh, you know, I say Walking Dead's done, um, but anything could happen, right? You know, there could be a Daryl spinoff series, and we could meet new characters who appeared in the in the um, comic series, and suddenly things spike. So, yeah, you can't. You can't fully lose faith in it from a speculation perspective, but from a collector perspective, there's some great opportunities. Uh, great, and especially on those like random issues, if you were ever looking to build your Walking Dead run, which I know a lot of people were, uh, you know, those, those random issues that were once so inflated because everything Walking Dead, everything with that name on it was just out of this world priced. 
have now come down to earth and you can really fill in a lot of those filler issues. Yeah, I think it's definitely a benchmark series, right? I mean, it, it set records for sales. Uh, television show was crazy. So I think it'll say it's day again. I mean, besides you got some of those older books that still are valuable that aren't even based on the TV series. Like look at titles like Invincible. Those early issues are still crazy. Right. still popular. I agree. Walking Dead is cold right now. I mean, like freaking sunken Titanic cold, but I, I'm not getting rid of my books because one, I like the series. I still have the, all the compendiums as well as a bunch of, a bunch of the floppies, but either way, if you are trying to buy them now, like Jack said, now is definitely the time. If you're trying to sell them, I would think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Then the last one we have for the three down portion this week is Todd McFarlane signed graded books. You would think, hey, Todd McFarlane's hot, Spawn's hot, Todd's signature's hot, but there's a reason why it's kind of down right now because we just introduced a bunch of those into the market, haven't we, Jack? Yeah, and I got to admit, we're kind of cheating with this one because it's not really down per se. Um, we haven't fully seen the effects of this. This is, uh, I could have made the argument um, for the sake of debate. I could have put this as hot because I've also seen 9 million yeah. Instagram posts of every comic dealer, um, every comic collector getting back there signed uh, Todd McFarlane books, which keep posting those because as a McFarlane fan, they're amazing. It's been really cool to see all these awesome, so many nine eights, so many great signed uh, classics. Um, so many books I didn't even know McFarlane was associated with. Yeah, I'd say this one's kind of on the three down with an asterisk next to it. Right. And it's here for the purpose, I think, of discussion. So we want to hear from you guys in the comment section. Um, let us know um, what you think about this. Um, how is the effect on the market? Because I say that this is actually going to cause a downturn. Um, and I, I say that with an asterisk because I love what CGC did. I think CGC bringing McFarlane in, in-house, them handling it, um, having you send the books to them, uh, taking the middleman out of it. Uh, it was an awesome thing. I would love to see CGC do this again. It seemed to work really smooth. Everybody seems to be real happy with it. Nobody complained about the price. Nobody complained about the shipping. Nobody complained about the time it took. Um, so I would love to see CGC do this with other heavyweights, like, you know, the Jim Lees of the world, uh, you know, somebody, some people of that kind of name caliber, uh, you know, an Adam Hughes or somebody like that. But they, to do that, I think was a good idea. I think all the people that are getting these books signed and graded, also a good idea, right? I mean, we're seeing beautiful books come back, awesome. It's Todd McFarlane's signature is iconic. Yeah, because it's not like he goes and does a bunch of signings. Exactly. So that's where it is. It's like, if you look at a – that's where I think a lot of people made the decision to do this, right? Because you started to look at the cost versus the value of these signatures. And we've talked about that a lot in the channel, how like a lot of times getting signed and graded books, it doesn't always pan out because for guys at every show, um, it, 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 it can be cost prohibitive. Or if you have a guy like Neil Adams who charges so much based on what his signature is truly worth on the secondary market. He, he charges like $30 to, for you to look him in the eye or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he, he's, he goes up at every show because he wants to be the most expensive person in the room. So if anybody else goes up, he goes up even more. Um, but McFarlane isn't everywhere. So he is an example of a guy where there was money to be made, but this is the point that I'm making just in my Instagram feed. I've probably seen a half dozen people with a total of maybe 30 or 40 spawn number one, nine, eight signed and graded. Um, and they're dealers. So they're going to try to sell these. And I uh, think, Stan. I don't think so. Now that's a different story. Um, I, I think I did see a nine four newsstand, but it, it, that's one of those things where it's we're going to see. I would imagine ASM three sixty one, ASM three hundred. Uh, I would imagine Spawn one. I think we're going to see a lot of these books hit the market, and really change dramatically the look of the yellow label census with CGC just because of how easy this was to be a part of compared to the previous attempts to get his signature. If you were trying to get his signature, 
at a convention, you were waiting in lines, you were paying money, you were going through all these hoops and hassles. So um, that's what really my point on it is just that we're going to now see, there's going to be certain books, right? I've seen some real wild stuff. Um, I've seen Marvel Tales issues signed and graded. There's going to be some books that get signed and graded that have never been signed and graded before. So those books are going to spike the, per and that's going to be positive. But again, we're going to see some of these keys. Maybe I, it's scary to think. We heard, I heard that there was thousands of books getting signed and graded by McFarlane over those few days that he was there. Um, could we see several hundred of some of these keys enter the market? Probably. And what will that do to pricing? What's going to happen? Time's going to tell, but I would imagine it would depress it some. So there it is. That's three up and three down, the hot and cold count market trends for this week. Real quick before you go, we want to congratulate our friends, their YouTube channel, The Comet Core. They reached 1,000 subscribers, so they are now monetizing on YouTube. But what's great about that is all the monetization is going straight to Heroes Initiative. So kudos to them for that. If you haven't checked them out, make sure you check out The Comet Core YouTube channel and make sure you subscribe. Bunch of great content on there as well. With that being said, this is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.